In Cuba, the sixth cycle of peace talks between the delegations of the Colombian government and the National Liberation Army concluded. The parties agreed to extend the bilateral ceasefire. In Palestine, the Israeli regime committed 12 massacres on the 123rd day of its relentless siege of Gaza, killing 107 people and wounded 143 others. And in Spain, farmers' unions continue protesting in Catalonia to demand a diesel fuel subsidy and the purchase of their agricultural products at a fair price, among other issues. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Resus Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. On Tuesday, the sixth dialogue between the delegations of the government of Colombia and the National Liberation Army concluded in Cuba. After two weeks of intense negotiations in Havana, an agreement was reached on a bilateral ceasefire for the next six months. The National Liberation Army committed itself during this period to suspend unilaterally and temporarily the economic retentions. The parties also agreed to create a multi-donor fund for the peace process and to continue with dialogues in order to achieve the desired peace in that South American country. President of Colombia, Gustavo Petro, reiterated his denouncement against the campaign of political prosecution that seeks to bring about a coup d'etat against him. The president called on the population to mobilize in support of him and in rejection of what he described as the mafia takeover of the public prosecutor's office. Petro accused the general prosecutor Francisco Barbosa of putting this institution at the service of conservative interests to hunt people close to the government under an institutional cloak. The Colombian president also recalled that the Constitution prohibits the office from investigating the president while reiterating his condemnation of the raid on the headquarters of the Colombian Federation of Educators to look for alleged irregularities in the financing of his electoral campaign. In this context, the Colombian political analyst Mauricio Jaramillo said that the cabinet of the government of Gustavo Petro is being persecuted. What we have seen is a persecution by the prosecutors of the president's circle, a series of attestations and affirmations with respect to certain policies that the government has developed in terms of criminal policy, restorative justice, drug, since they have nothing to do with the role of the prosecutor. So I would think that there is no confrontation. What there is, concretely, is a prosecutor's office that, since Barbosa has been in office, has overstepped in boundaries and is obviously being used as a platform for his political project in the run-up of the presidential election on March 26. In Mexico, President Andrés Manuel López Obrador announced a series of constitutional reform initiatives, mainly of a political, economic, labor, educational, electoral and social nature, which will be immediately sent to Congress for discussion. López Obrador, whose Morena party dominates 65 percent of the Chamber of Deputies along with its leftist allies, proposed a score of measures to modify unpopular constitutional articles that have gone against the public interest. The president stated that the objective is to protect the most disadvantaged Mexicans and enhance their development opportunities. Among the reform initiative announced by the president, the intention to modify the retirement policies was announced, with changes to the reform promoted in 1997 by President Ernesto Cedillo and in 2007 when Felipe Calderón was already president. The essence of this norm and new rights is to put public life back on the path of freedom, justice and democracy. On Monday, the Supreme Electoral Tribunal of El Salvador declared the preliminary poll counting of the presidential elections failed without giving explanation about the errors seen in the process. In this regard, the Electoral Authority acknowledged failures in the results transmission system, which prevented to conclude the closing and counting as expected. On the other hand, the president of the Electoral Tribunal, Dora Mar Martinez, assured that inconveniences made it difficult for the transmission of data. In this sense, she noted that the system was able to process only 70.25% of the tally sheets in the presidential election, while in the legislative election only 5.06%. On the other hand, polling stations workers denounced the breakdown of the transmission system, the slow internet connection, the lack of paper to print the tally sheets, and even system errors that double and triple votes for the party of Nayib Bukele.
In Brazil, Mayor Eduardo Paes decreed a state of public health emergency in the city of Rio de Janeiro due to dengue fever. The city council inaugurated on Monday 10 centers for the care of patients with the virus. The Minister of Health, Nicia Trinade, asked for the cooperation of the population to prevent the disease from spreading in the city. She also announced the upcoming presentation of the calendar for vaccination against the disease throughout the country. The immunization will prioritize children and teenagers between 10 and 14 years of age, as this is the age group that concentrates the highest number of hospitalizations due to the disease. Brazil registered an explosion in the number of dengue cases in the first two weeks of the year 2024, 55,859 probable cases and six deaths, according to the ministry. In Argentina, Congress continued debating this Tuesday the so-called omnibus bill, article by article, following its general approval last Friday. Differences still exist between the ruling party and the friendly opposition blocs on delegated powers, foreign debt, the sustainability guarantee fund, and privatization of public companies. Deputies predicted the debate to be long, as it could easily last until Thursday. The ruling party needs to reach an agreement with the benches that supported the approval of the bill in order to vote in favor of each of the 383 articles. In this context, labor unions and social movements have taken to the streets to condemn the bill, which they say would affect the livelihood of Argentines. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Teles English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back from the South. In Chile, the Forensic Medical Service updated the death toll from last weekend's fires in the central region of Valparaiso, where there are still many bodies that have not been identified. As of 7 p.m. local time on Monday, the death toll was 123 people, of which 33 were identified. Also at the time, 79 autopsies were performed and three deceased were delivered to their families. In this context, the Undersecretary of Justice, Jaime Hagajardo, informed that the Forensic Service staff was increased to speed up the work in the Valparaiso region. Likewise, the Forensic Services joined forces with different institutions, as the District Prosecutor's Office and the Investigation Police, to continue facing this tragedy. What has impacted us the most is the magnitude of the destruction of this fire. Personally, in 11 years, I had never seen the level of violence of a wildfire that spread to homes that devastated the entire population. And that is the most shocking thing. In this context, the organizing committee of the 2024 Viña del Mar Festival has announced that it will cancel the pre-event gala scheduled for Friday, February 23rd. The drastic decision was taken in view of the complex situation of the forest fires that are raging in the fifth region. The promoters assure that they are continuing to develop the preparations for the festival with the aim of holding the event with a focus on solidarity. The festival generates around 4,000 direct jobs and another 20,000 indirect jobs during the month of February. It also promotes the visit of at least 80,000 people who bring in around $25 million in income in areas such as commerce and hospitality. In the United States, authorities declared a state of emergency after the storm flooded several areas of California, killing three people and affecting thousands. In Southern California, it has been raining for the last 24 hours, while in the north, violent wind gusts caused the fall of large trees. About 830,000 people across the state were without power on Monday afternoon. In Los Angeles, a severe storm caused landslides and floods that cut off highways. In response, Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency for eight of California's 58 counties. The 
The Palestinian health authorities announced on Tuesday that in the last 24 hours, the Israeli occupation army committed 12 massacres, killing 107 people and wounding 143 in the Gaza Strip. In the framework of the 123 days of the total siege on the Palestinian population, Israel intensified its air, land and sea attacks on several areas of the coastal enclave. In this regard, local authorities highlighted the Zionist attacks targeted civilians while shelling a residential apartment in the city of Hamad, northwest of Han Yunis. It is worth to highlight that since last October 7th, the occupation army has killed 27,968 Palestinians and wounded more than 66,000 in the Gaza Strip, while thousands more remain on the rubble. Meanwhile, in the north of the Gaza Strip, thousands of families wait for the arrival of food and aid while they try to survive the Israeli attacks. In this regard, locals denounced that members of the forces of the occupation army continue shooting daily against those who are looking for food. Young people leave their homes and arrive early in the morning to get the daily bread for their children. However, the Israeli occupation army shoots at them. What can I tell you? Recently, they were shot. Here, martyrs for every day, young people like flowers lose their lives in the attempt to get the food for their children. With my respect to all, this street is called the Street of the Youth of Death. It is dead for food. De repente vimos un tanque a una distancia. Suddenly we saw a tent at the distance of 200 meters while we were looking for flour. That is, they give us the flour and then they shoot at us. Why don't they respect our lives while we are looking for flour? We don't want anything more. This cannot go on like this. Find us another solution to this daily suffering of the people here. The UN denounced that Israel has blocked most of the aid delivery is bound for northern Gaza this January. The United Nations daily press briefing by the office of the spokesperson for the Secretary General declared that for the month of January as a whole, only 10 of the 61 humanitarian aid missions planned for the north of Gaza were facilitated by the Israeli authorities. Of the remaining 51 deliveries, two were allowed in on a partial basis, 34 were denied access altogether and six others were postponed by eight groups due to alleged internal operational issues. It is unclear what happened to the remaining deliveries. Most of the eight missions contained food support for the besieged area and were aimed at supporting northern Gaza's hospitals, water sanitation facilities and other hygiene services. Israel's Public Defender's Office reports that thousands of Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails sleep on the floor, suffer poor sanitary and hygienic conditions, are cramped into small cells, and live with rats. The document from the Attorney General's Office allowing a visit to several prisons revealed that some 3,400 Palestinians have been imprisoned since the start of the current cycle of violence on October 7, 2023, increasing the pressure on the already overcrowded cells. Among the problems identified are overcrowding, poor sanitary and hygienic conditions, pest problems, as well as a lack of adequate ventilation and basic equipment for inmates. The report warns of a prison crisis and possible unnecessary frictions with guards. We have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on the screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people constant news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Found your break, don't go away. Welcome back from the south. In Spain, protests by the farmers' union are blocking different accesses to the main roads in Catalonia to demand a diesel fuel subsidy and the purchase of their agricultural products at a fair price, among other issues. With tractor rallies, the Farmers and Agricultural Union closes road accesses to protest, to protest for improvements in agricultural policies in view of the crisis they are going through. Likewise, a spokesman for the Ministry of the Interior emphasized that the security forces are working to guarantee the right to protest and that citizens can access essential services. For its part, the Spanish Confederation of Freight Transport, through a statement, urged the government to take actions that could guarantee the free circulation of people and goods throughout the country. 
And from France, the European Union's executive arm on Tuesday shelved its anti-pesticides proposal in yet another concession to farmers after weeks of protests blocked major capitals and economic lifelines across the bloc. The Commission proposed SUR, which is the worthy aim to reduce the risks of chemical plant production products. But the SUR proposal has become a symbol of polarization. It has been rejected by the European Parliament. There is no progress anymore in the Council either. So we have to do something. And that is why I will propose to the College to withdraw this proposal. But of course the topic stays. And to move forward and to move forward, more dialogue and a different approach is needed. And on this basis, the Commission could make a new proposal with much more matured, matured content and with the stakeholders together. In Turkey, a citizens paid tribute to the victims of the February 6, 2023 earthquakes, which left more than 53,000 dead. People from all over the country gathered for memorial ceremonies, honoring the memory of those who lost their lives in the disaster. In this context, through social media, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan paid tribute to the victims and stressed that his government is actively working to fulfill his promises to the country, adding that these efforts will continue until all the cities are rebuilt and revitalized. On February 6, 2023, a series of earthquakes hit 11 Turkey provinces, leaving a total of 53,537 people dead and more than 100,000 injured. In Senegal, the opposition described as a constitutional coup the postponement of the February 25th presidential elections. The nation's parliament voted to postpone presidential elections to December 15th, with 105 votes in favor in the 165-seat assembly. Opposition lawmakers were forcibly removed from the chamber as they debated President Macky Sall's decision to delay the polls. The shock decision, a first in Senegal's history, since independence triggered protests in the West African nation. President Sall will remain in office until his successor is appointed. The head of state, who has served the maximum two terms, was due to leave office on April 2nd. We now move to the world of sports, exactly the one known for balls, strike and runs. The fifth day of the Caribbean Series, a baseball tournament that brings together the champion teams of the Caribbean and Latin American leagues, was played on Monday. During the fifth day of baseball, the team from Curaçao defeated the Gigantes de Rivas from Nicaragua. With this result, they improved their record to two wins, two loses, and keep them on track to qualifying to the semifinals of the Caribbean Series 2024, while Nicaragua is the only winless team of the event. On the other hand, the team representing Venezuela, Tiburones of La Guaira, thanks to an explosive seventh inning won against the Naranjeros of Hermosillo out of Mexico, which gives manager Osi Guillén his third win and places them one step away from qualifying to the summer finals to be played on Saturday. In the last match of the day, the Federales de Chiriqui of Panama defeated Criollos de Caguas of Puerto Rico in a close game, assuring their qualification to the semifinals of the tournament with a record of four wins. In this way, the Panamanians are the only undefeated team and are waiting for the Southern game and aiming to advance to the final on Sunday. On Tuesday, the baseball action of the Caribbean Series continues with the following games from the Merlins Park in South Florida. The Gigantes of Rivas of Nicaragua will face Naranjeros, the Hermosillo from Mexico, where Nicaragua is looking for its first victory of the series at all costs. Next, the most winning team lifetime in Caribbean Series, the Tigres of Licey of the Dominican Republic will play against Curaçao Sons in a most win game for both teams because the winner will reach its third victory in search of the semifinals. And finally, the game that will close the day will be the match between Tiburones of La Guaira of Venezuela and they already classified to the next round Federales of Chiriqui out of Panama that forces their representative of Venezuela to win despite the rival could be playing without pressure for being already in the semifinal round. 
Let's see how the standings of the Caribbean Series looks like after Monday's game. Federales of Jericho are in the first position with an undefeated record of four wins and no losses. They are already qualified to the next round. Tiburones of La Guaira are in second place with three wins and one loss, followed by Criollos of Cagua with three wins and one loss. In the fourth position are the Curacao Sounds with an even record of two wins and two losses, as well as the Tigres of Licey. In sixth place are Naranjeros of Hermosillo with one win and four losses and closing the table, Gigantes de Rivas with no win so far. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at www.tresreenglish.net. You can also join us on our social media on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Tresor English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.